Gracias, Senor Sanchez. Um, firstly, uh, let me express my great appreciation to you, Mr. Chairman, and to the organisers for the opportunity to present um, at the World Congress of Families. Um, the subject of our discussion this afternoon, as you'll see on the program, is family, social and government policies. I speak from an Australian perspective, but a number of the issues which I will speak about are similar to those both of uh, which have been referred to by our United States, Canadian and uh, by uh, Theresa from Nigeria. Uh, government policies towards the family are contradictory. On one hand, governments offer a range of economic benefits, sometimes in the forms of direct payments, such as family allowances or maternal allowances, and in other cases, tax concessions for families. Many laws um, address issues related to families. On the other hand, Governments facilitate divorce through no-fault divorce in our country, as in many other Western countries. They subsidise abortion and, in some nations, euthanasia. They provide equal treatment for unmarried people with, in relation, in comparison to those who are married. They put no restrictions on the widespread availability of pornography which exploits men, women and children. Um, they offer and often impose value-free sex education in schools, even to young children in primary schools, and permit the sexual exploitation of young people, particularly girls. We additionally have, again, in our country, and I believe through most of the Western world, programs such as IVF, uh, artificial reproductive technology um, and surrogacy, which separate fertility um, from natural reproduction. The effect of all of these measures is that despite government claims of all political parties in all Western countries to support the family, in fact, government policies often facilitate the disintegration of the family unit. Um, the, uh, additionally, we should be conscious of the fact that there are issues which are outside of the direct role of government action, but which also affect the family. Uh, for example, um, I referred before to the problem of pornography. We have in many Western countries uh, a very deep-seated drug culture, uh, and this is not simply drugs such as uh, legal drugs such as alcohol, but illicit drugs such as marijuana, heroin, and ice. We have a broad problem in our society with the impact of films. Very often, what is uh, coming out of the United States and what is I think correctly described as Hollywood culture. More broadly, the media. We have the emergent technologies from the internet, which again, um, in a very profound sense, have the uh, threat to undermine the role of parents simply because of the fact that in most Western countries, children spend hours each day in front of the internet and further hours each day um, on uh, watching television. And on top of these, we have other issues, deep-seated social issues which impact the family, such as unemployment, demographic decline and domestic violence, to which governments may contribute to some extent, but which also are arising from forces beyond the direct role of national governments. And for us, the question is, what can we do about all of this? I want to suggest to you that every one of these issues must be the subject of action by pro-family and pro-life organisations. It is, in my view, a mistake to believe that we can solve the attack on the family by concentrating on just one or two issues, however important they may be, such as the issues of same-sex marriage or of abortion. 
because the truth is there is a society-wide challenge to the family and uh, for all of us, if we are to meet this challenge, we must put forward credible alternatives over a whole range of fields. Now the truth is many of our organisations are involved, have a single focus, a single central focus. And that's entirely understandable and because of that they have developed particular expertise in meeting the challenges in those areas. But we have to develop comprehensive solutions to the many threats which the family structure faces in contemporary Western society today. The, the reality is that it will not be done, in my view, through just one organisation or by winning one battle. The issues which we face will go on for decades and probably generations to come. None of the issues which I've identified are ones which are amenable to quick and easy solutions. But nonetheless, we must attempt to engage in those and through different organisations, different aspects of those challenges, so as to ensure that there is a consistent um, a commitment by people who believe in the maintenance of the values of our Western culture and the preservation of our society to ensure that that is carried through to future generations. Now, some of us at times are demoralised and think that nothing can be done. I want to give you three very short examples to show that things can be done and often in unexpected places. The first example is from a little country off the coast of Australia called East Timor, a country with only a million people. Um, it only got uh, independence in 2002. There was a push in East Timor about two years ago, originating in UN agencies and Australian development agencies, to push for East Timor to carry a law in favour of abortion. And the Council of Ministers, that is, the senior ministers in government, proposed this law to East Timor's parliament. And when the matter came to a vote, it was defeated by 44 votes to nil with five abstentions. And the reason for that was because people in East Timor did not want to be bullied by the United Nations and its organisations or by Australian NGOs. They would make their own decisions, and they have done so. A second example. Um, in my home state in Australia, the state of Victoria, in 2006 um, an extreme abortion law was adopted after a conscience vote was introduced, a law which allows abortion up to birth uh, and also removes from doctors, from um, nurses and from pharmacists the right of conscientious objection to that law. Well, I can tell you that pro-life organisations in our state were utterly demoralised after that legislation was carried. But we got together and we decided that we would fight back. And in the last state election, targeted campaigns against each of those members who had supported that legislation were conducted in our state of Victoria, in about 20 marginal seats. And as a result of those campaigns, uh, together of course with the normal political processes, 12 of those members of the governing party who had supported that legislation were defeated. And in fact, enough people were defeated to change government. And the final example I want to refer to deals with the issue of same-sex marriage, which in Australia is a hot issue. In the year 2004, after some states of, in the United States of America and Holland uh, had adopted laws which uh, facilitated a same-sex marriage, and understanding that this would inevitably come to Australia, um, the Associated Organisation of Mine, that is the Australian Family Association, led a campaign 
to try to get Australia's federal government to entrench in law marriage as the union of a man and a woman entered into for life. At that time, we had a social conservative government. They understood the problem and they introduced legislation to entrench what we understand by natural marriage. And that law was carried in Australia unanimously. Now, time marches on. The former socially conservative government was defeated. A government of the left was elected, and one of the consequences of that is that same-sex marriage came on back on the agenda. And in fact, the governing party in Australia today changed its internal policy, a policy which it had adopted for over 100 years, to uh, support the legalisation of same-sex marriage. And so, at this moment, we have three bills before our federal parliament in favour of same-sex marriage. And yet, it's not inevitable that that will go through. Very fortunately, our main opposition parties are totally and completely committed to supporting marriage as the relation of a man and a woman. And the governing, governing party has offered a conscience vote to those of its members who disagree with the, uh, the imposed uh, majority opinion. And we believe that certainly if there were a vote taken today, that same-sex marriage in Australia would be defeated. Uh, and what it shows me is that there is nothing inevitable about uh, a decline in the issues which we are trying to deal with. Uh, there will be constant pressure coming from the secular humanists to impose their agenda on the rest of society, but we must fight back, and we can fight back. And if we are able to enlist enough of our own citizens in our own countries to engage in this struggle, in my view, common sense and common decency will prevail, and we can turn around the great challenges we face today. Thank you very much.